Jean-Marie Philippe says, or Phillips says, describe your thoughts about anxiety and depression during just this. So, I think you put it very clearly. Describe your thoughts. So you can describe thoughts all day. Anxiety and depression are thoughts. What those thoughts seem to point at or are triggered by is some energetic sensation or appearance or another thought. So there might be a feeling in the chest, a kind of energetic sensation, a fluttering type energetic sensation in the chest. And the mind quickly labels that undesirable and then tells a story, anxiety, and then starts generating more thoughts. Tomorrow I have to go to work and see this boss I don't like. And now I'm stressed. All of that is a story. The only thing that was really happening is the energetic sensation in the chest. And even that was just a label that we gave to something that's indescribable. And then the thoughts just arose and those are all fine. So anxiety and depression, they're real experiences They cause tremendous suffering when we believe that we are the ones having the experience and it is happening to us as a separate self and that it could be otherwise. When that starts to relax, see what anxiety and depression show up as. It won't be recognizable without thought. That's why for depression, They use cognitive behavioral therapy sometimes because it's a modification and recognizing dysfunctional and maladaptive thoughts, catastrophizing, black and white thinking, cognitive distortions, things like that. Um, And noticing them and realizing, oh, they're not true. But that's even just using thought to fight thought, which is fine. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with any treatments for depression and anxiety in that sense. It's just the root cause. You haven't uprooted the root cause. What is the root cause? The delusion that you're a separate suffering self that could be otherwise than you are. That's it. That's really it. When that delusion relaxes, and by the way, it doesn't happen to a person because there's no person there. It just suddenly is, oh, oh, oh. And people call that awakening or part of awakening, but it's just, it's just labels. See Lily Mariquin, how to control it. You can't, <laughs> you can't control anything. And when you really know that instinctively at the cellular level, you know that there's no control. There's no you, there's no doer. How are any of these things a problem? They're just as they are. And that's going to sound, yes, it's a, you guys aren't going to like that. You're not going to like that. Your mind is not, you're going to say, Z, you've lost your mind. Like you're making, you're reducing this complex suffering to just that. Well, I'm sorry, but I'm telling you the truth. (laughs) It's just, just exactly right. It doesn't mean that, you know, you don't have very bad, you know, classically bad experiences from there. It doesn't mean that you don't experience pain, but the suffering of the person that thinks it could be otherwise or could control anything is gone. And so then it's just life living itself. And life is, life can be hard. There are challenges. Sure. But the body mind just arises and things happen. Some of those challenges are met. Some are not. So what, who cares by who cares? I mean, ask yourself who cares, who in your experience cares, find the who, find the I that cares, look there. And I suspect you'll keep looking because you won't find it in the way you think. It's a great question. Who cares? Oh, well, what I thought was me is just a pattern of energy comes and goes. So it can't really be me. Cause when I'm in deep sleep, there's no pattern of energy. So that's not me. So where am I? Who's the one who cares? Mm. That's inquiry 101 right there. Who am I? 